Pipeline and worldwide get rid of these things. Disgusting. Disgusting. None of these politicians will talk about this. What is wrong? God, we're so immersed in madness. I, God, what's wrong with our species? What does it take? What is God going to have to do to hit us over the head metaphorically with a frying pan, individually, collectively, to get us to wake up out of our slumber? You see what's happened to our species? We're cooked, man. We're in so much trouble. We're so far down this demonic rabbit hole toward hell. It's going to be so hard to extricate us. How are, we, how are we going to be extricated from the maws of these evildoers? It's the finger of God, only the finger of God that can help us now. That's it, man. I mean, it's pray hard. It's pray hard that God is gentle with us because we do not deserve to be treated gently. We're all without excuse, okay, for not doing everything we can in our power to speak out against the evil in our land. Because great wrath is hanging over us. And I don't, I, mean, I don't want anybody to be hurt. I'm not, I'm not sadistic. Okay? I choose not to be. And you can too. That means you got to speak up, man. Speak out loud. Be vociferous. Or else that, you're culpable. The blood is on your hands and head. Silence equals death. Stop choosing ignorance. Stop choosing stupidity. Get smart quick. Life's short. You know, Dr. Phil doesn't do a damn thing enough to, to point people to God and say, you need God. I mean, what is he, on Judgment Day, what's Dr. Phil? Did he actually, he owns himself? He chose his course in life. He didn't create his brain. He didn't create his body. He doesn't own himself. I want to hear him talk. I need a little help here, Dr. Phil. Hey, do you want to help people psychologically? I see these people fighting. you got this love triangle thing going on, this show I watched recently, and you're not going to inject God into the mix? Well, it's completely legal to commit adultery. There's nothing wrong. What are you going to try to reach them? Oh, well, you know, there's no law to back up. You. Well, you shouldn't have this law. Why? Why? And these people, they're not, nobody's talking about God. Nobody's talking about, well, the Bible says that's wrong. You're just not supposed to do that. Uh, okay, you know how you're hurting people when you do that? Adultery is immoral. It's unethical. It's ungodly. That's why you don't do it excoriate him in that matter. But no, Dr. Phil's not doing that. You, you try to instill the fear of God in their soul. little help here, Dr. Phil. little help, brother. If you, if you yourself pray, you, be, you should be telling other people to pray. Who's your shrink? you got issues too because you're human. That's how I know that. Everybody's got issues. This black guy, a bird-watching guy in uh, Central Park in New York, uh, came across this woman with her dog off the leash who wasn't supposed to be because it's going to scare the birds away for the for the bird watchers. And she's such a racist, psycho pig of a woman. I mean, I, I'm sorry, God. Please forgive me for saying that. But you know what? And she made a fake report. I mean, that's against the law. Filing a fake police report, that woman needs to be jailed, not just lose her job. Okay? That's sick, man. You're sick. Final note on the male-female relationship. Yeah, we need to put ourselves in each other's shoes. I think this would help the male-female situation, the dynamics, where we could get along a lot better. Is if, if men consider the, you know, what it's like to be a woman, really think about that. These, these women, I mean, regarding sex, their minds have to work a lot differently. I mean, they could get pregnant. Could you Guys, could you imagine getting pregnant and giving birth, pushing a baby out their genitals? I mean, you think that's not calls for incredible respect, okay, and sensitivity to them? I mean, they're the boss. They have to be the boss, and that's why, okay, understand very clear that they call the shots. Because of who has anything to do with their body, okay, who enters their body. So it's very important to have that set in your mind that you, nothing's going to cause you to violate a woman, okay? You can't do it. Okay, even if the woman might act like she wants it, you can't, you, no, no, even more so. You can't take advantage of women in that way. But, you know, ladies, there's a lot of really decent guys out there that just want affection. They want a female. They want to savor you. Do you understand what, they want to revel in you. They just, it's such a beautiful thing, the way that God made it. He loves you so much. The man loves that woman so much, and you want the same woman over and over and over. And you're a snuggler, and you're 
you're a cuddler. I mean, this is a lot of guys, including myself. I mean, my, my intentions are very pure for women. I don't, I don't hurt women. Okay, and the older I get, the further removed I am from the idea of violating or hurting a woman in any way. They're such a beautiful creature. I like to think they're the same way, that, you know, they, they love the male of the species, too, and they want to savor us and, uh, you know, enjoy us to the maximum of their female ability. You know, their, their femaleness is such a beautiful thing to me. And, um, you know, they've got to know that. They've got to know just how appreciated they are without letting it go to their head and using that power in an unruly, unethical manner. You know, like prostitution, here's another law of man. Right now, prostitution is illegal in California from everything I know. There's no counties or cities or anything in California where prostitution is legal. Of course, there's loopholes, I think, with this call girl thing, you know. But in five years from now, maybe it'll be legal. How, how do we know? I mean, in Nevada's already opened the door, right? We got certain city, Carson City, there's other areas of Nevada where prostitution is legal. And since it's legal in one place, it's all with a wink and a nod. Well, why isn't it legal here? You see, it's a fickle law of man. I mean, why not be legal? And it's the world's oldest profession. What's immoral about it? You know, who are you, my judge? You know, what's wrong? I want to sell my body. This guy wants to buy it, you know, and end of story. But there's a big problem, right? There, it is a moral and ethical problem, and that's it. You know, that's what our laws are supposed to be based on. But we can't even follow the one law of treating others the way we want to be treated, because if we did that, we wouldn't have any problems in society. If we were all living that way by the golden rule, where other people's welfare was, we saw it as more important than our own, or at least equally, absolutely equally. As important as our own welfare? No, we're all divorcing ourselves from others, separating ourselves from others, and saying that's okay, but it's unscientific. It doesn't work that way. You, you understand we're all so inextricably interconnected on an osmotic level. It's called osmosis. You're going to get your share of suffering. Okay? That's it. That's the greatest reason the incentive motivation i can offer up anybody to give a damn about others man so ladies you got to care about men too you know i mean we're all a little hung up about our units you know that right so we're, we're kind of vulnerable in that arena but uh, other than that uh, you know we're great i mean uh, but just like everybody else we've all got body issues and it dates back to the original sin the fall of man and the very first first question god asks is who told you you're naked can you imagine what an utter profound departure that is from the current paradigm? I like clothes. I'll be straight up with you. I'm not, I don't want to really live in a world where we're all walking around, not in these flesh and blood bodies anyhow. If it's spiritual body, it's different, whole different thing. Maybe it's wiped from our conscience, so we will be oblivious. We won't be hung up. We'll be pure in heart in that regard completely. I'm, I'm definitely down for whatever God has in store. But it says we'll be clothed with uh, robes of righteousness. So... Metaphor otherwise, I don't know everything. So I'm just putting it out there. God saved us plenty of room to use our imagination in Scripture. Continuing here, I'm on to some uh, thoughts from the last couple of weeks, okay? And I only have a couple of minutes, so I don't have time for many thoughts. One of these days I'm going to get caught up because i got a whole lot of thoughts to share with the world. Instead of writing a book, this is my way of getting it out there in prose. Okay, freestyle writing, that's all I have to offer, but they're thoughts I feel are important to share with people. Consider for a moment how much easier it is to both, quote, muddy the waters, figuratively speaking, and literally speaking. Clearing the waters is far more challenging, a decidedly dirty job dumped in the laps of the righteous, one relegated to the meek, the pure of heart. Why, I ask, has the term entitled become a pejorative in the 21st century American culture? Why, when the term is commensurate, even synonymous with the term rights, and being that standing, stand, that standing up for human dignity, fundamental human rights, and our Bill of Rights, our very Constitution, are all cherished American values, our precepts, our virtues, America is supposed to be acting as an exemplar, a paragon of entitled people, righted people. While it is perfectly true 
it is an incontrovertible fact that it is every man's prerogative to be willfully ignorant, to choose to be stupid, to rationalize and cite a, a credo of blissful ignorance they, they are following, but I cannot condone nor recommend such a stupid credo. All right, friends, I got to leave it there. Listen, until next time. But, uh, you know, keep fighting the good fight, okay, for truth, justice, and all the good things. And I promise, I make very few promises, but I promise you'll be glad someday. And you will be aptly rewarded, far more than you know. I have not seen nor ear heard what the Lord has in store for those who love him.